and is Professor Wunderlich, uh, teach uh, engineering, architecture, and computer science. Uh, this lecture is on color and technology associated with it, also a little bit about the physics of it and a little bit about how our uh, brain perceives color. Uh, we're going to talk about monitors and also televisions and then decision analysis in general in preparation for projects and designing things and design is always a decision making process so you need options to choose from. So firstly uh, we want to learn about uh, visible light and that's part of the electro electromagnetic spectrum and uh, there's two videos on this first slide here I want you to watch uh, in a second here before you go on to the next slide. Uh, the first video just explains the electromagnetic spectrum and where visible light is within that and the things that exist uh, and are useful at other frequencies in, in technology. It's not what we see, but there are other useful wavelengths. And wavelength is just the inverse of frequency. So speaking of frequencies and wavelengths, it is similar. Before we talk about additive and subtractive colors, uh, uh, we want to first learn how our brain and why our brain is perceiving things the way it does. So without uh, too much uh, other documentation on that, uh, there's a video there. So uh, please pause here and watch the two short videos. The first one up by visible light there on the electromagnetic spectrum. And then the second one here, a uh, video on how our brain sees color. On these next two slides, I'd like you to remember two main concepts, main applications to uh, computing, and, uh, and to get the basic principles of what goes on. Now, you can read the text. I've highlighted some things, but mostly I just want you to, to read all of it and remember uh, some, some key things that I'll state here. Uh, computer monitors use additive color, where we mix the three wavelengths of light red, green, and blue. And we'll talk about different monitor technologies in a minute and how that works with the different types of monitors. But for now, uh, computer monitors, monitors mix um, light that's coming directly from a source uh, towards our eyes. Uh, and it's a actual multi-stage multi process, um, exciting different atoms and phosphorus and such you'll see. But the, the end result is there are various wavelengths of light incident on our eyes and the computer monitor uh, uses those principles. And so for example if you mix all three uh, of red, green, and blue you get white light when it's uh, additive color. And the main thing on this page is that computer printers use subtractive color and you can read everything there it's highlighted uh, just read all of it actually and with subtractive color the idea is uh, that what you're seeing is what is not absorbed so for example white paper reflects all of the wavelengths of light so they mix together and we see them um, if it if it absorbed all of the red and green, or I'm sorry, all of the green and blue, we would see red. And so that's, in fact, what happens when we see a red apple is the red apple absorbs the uh, green and blue, and we see what's not absorbed, is the red. And the way uh, printers work is um, the uh, when we're looking at something, we have light, a light source. We're looking at a piece of paper that has been has something uh, printed on it. We're seeing um, different colors of ink. And when and the, the, color, the inks are actually printed transparent, or uh, print, uh, the printing inks are such, uh, they are transparent, and they allow light to pass through uh, and to reflect off the base paper. And so it's a combination of how those inks absorb things. And then you'll see here uh, in the middle, computer printers use red, green, and blue ink, but also black, because in, uh, in theory, it actually they should just produce black. Um, uh, but because of, of the reality of how they're made, 
uh, you need a separate black uh, ink. And that's just what that's saying here. And that, that's more of a footnote too, but you may ask yourself that question why you have that. Um, so the main principles here are monitors, computer monitors use additive uh, color, and computer printers use subtractive colors. And subtractive is just the principle we described. Please continue reading the rest of what's here about uh, colors and uh, on the top part of this page. And then we're going to go on to uh, computer monitors. So if you want to pause and just finish reading that first, that's fine. But now, um, computer monitors. So um, before you click on this video, there's a video there and watch it uh, about some of the physics involved here, um, which is a little bit review of what you just did I learned about a second ago uh, but reinforces it before you before you do that um, look through here and understand this table of uh, hexadecimal decimal and binary so we've I believe we've discussed this or you've seen this someplace before but um, you know hexadecimal is uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 a, B, C, D, E, F goes up to 15, and then 1, 0 is 16. Uh, so uh, you know, it goes up to 15 because we count 0. You know, 0 in base 16 is a number just as 0 in base 10 is a number that you know, and we count up to 9 and then say the other 0. Even with base 10, we count up to 9. Same with hexadecimal. Uh, and what you're seeing here are the range of intensities of R, G, and B. So uh, if you look at the decimal first, we can go to uh, uh, 0 to 255 with um, two hexadecimal digits, which corresponds to uh, 8 bits, because they're 4 bits each, right? Each, or, uh, each you know, hexadecimal. Uh, digit corresponds to four bits. So you see in binary here, we're going from one, 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 zero, 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 zero. Uh, and so that that range of intensities. So uh, you see, you know, eight bits for each of the colors. Three times eight is twenty-four. So this is twenty-four bit color, if you've heard that referred to before. And so we vary the intensities of red, green, and blue to get uh, the mix of the colors. And so uh, you should should understand that. So if I was to ask you, um, since you know that monitors uh, are additive for color, if I turn up the intensity uh, completely to get white light and max out each of these you know, R, G, and B values, you know, what would that be in hexadecimal? There's a one-point test question. Well, that would be FF, FF, FF. So all three of them turned up full intensity would give you white by mixing all of the red, green, and blue at the equal and same intensity, highest intensity. Uh, conversely, black would just be all zeros. Um, so I uh, pause this and please watch that video where it says physics right above the uh, numbers here and then move on to the next slide. Now we want to discuss uh, the three different types of monitors here. Uh, the CRT, the LCD, and the plasma. So I'd like you to, to read everything on these slides, and then there's a couple of videos to reinforce it, and I will just discuss the main principles here. So the first is somewhat of a footnote. Do these still exist? Um, they were around until, I guess, 1990s, uh, thereabouts, when we went to flat screen, somewhere in there, but most of my youth, uh, born in 1961, so until I was about 40, uh, in my 40s, there were still CRTs for computer monitors and televisions. And they still exist. 
in some places. So it, even if it's a historical footnote, you should understand. This is one of the types of monitors. And the idea here is uh, you, you want to uh, control a beam of electrons. And uh, the basic principle is you, you, you heat up a uh, cathode which excites and allows uh, electrons to be emitted and then you control how they're, uh, they're directed in a beam towards the, f to the, ba towards the back of the screen. And there, there's three different energy beams, a red, green, and blue, and they're directed at what are called triads of pixels, uh, phosphorus cells painted on the screen. And so you're directing this electron beam uh, with magnetic fields um, that you're controlling and, and with a raster scan so it goes back and forth back and forth back and forth um, very fast faster than your eye can perceive and draws the images over and over and over again and the three beams are hitting triads of pixels of phosphorus atoms uh, painted on the back of a glass screen and then those phosphorus atoms as they're hit with the energy of the electron will be put into an excited state um, you maybe learn this in your physics, atomic physics, or quantum mechanics if you took such a thing. Uh, and you learn in quantum mechanics and anatomic physics that if you excite an, an atom to a certain energy level um, by, for example, bombarding it with an electron beam, it'll get go into an excited state, and then when it goes back to its resting state, it will emit energy uh, in the form of a photon, uh, a wave, an electromagnetic wave, a photon uh, you know, electromagnetic waves have particles associated with them, but they act like waves. They move through space like waves, but they interact with matter as they, as they have an effective mass. So uh, these photons are emitted, and then they hit your eye, and then uh, we've already learned about how that's processed. So, uh, so it is a, a source of light. It is additive color, but it's somewhat of a two-stage process here where these electrons are hitting the phosphorus, and then the phosphorus emit the uh, light energy towards your eyes. All right, the second one is an LCD screen, and uh, the best way to understand how that works is to watch uh, a couple videos here. Well, first thing you want to understand is LCD is different than an LED, and LCD is a liquid crystal display, and that's what your monitors are. An LED is like the little light bulb. If you bundle them together, you make bigger light sources now. And so you can watch the videos of how those two work. But you should know that an LCD is not an L LED. They're, they're different. Now, there are um, uh, LED, uh, um, there is LED backlighting uh, in some of the, the monitors. Uh, but uh, we don't want to confuse the two. So how a LCD screen works is uh, you essentially have these filters and we polarize the light, and then you bend the light, and you're controlling how the light's being bent uh, with these liquid crystals, and you're bending them in such a way uh, to, to control how the light that hits your eyes works. So, and you're doing that with three different uh, beams of light. So just think of bending the light with these uh, liquid crystal uh, helixes, you'll see. So stop this slide and take a minute to watch those uh, the video there, videos under LCD and LED. Now this is um, a comparison of a couple uh, uh, different types of technologies, a couple years old now, but the main principle is the same. So don't look at the dollar values or even the, the technologies that are, are there so much <clears throat> as the principle of comparing the quality of different uh, items. So uh, this is from, uh, there's there's uh, unbiased testing here. I listed the top LCD screens, PC Magazine. Um, now they're, they're biased in the way that they're Wintel machines, Windows and Intel, Windows operating system and Intel processor machine. Uh, and you know, Macs are unfortunately not anything any different anymore. It was nice, I think, when they were a little bit more different with uh, Motorola processors and a little bit more of their own technology. The Apple's fine on its own now. I've told stories about that, all of that before you've heard, so I won't repeat them here. Consumer Reports, I've been a member of that for uh, 
about almost 40 years now. Uh, I do just the online version. I kept all the magazines for years because the principles don't change, even though you know, I, uh, the, the, the items that you look at at a given time change. So you're just looking at uh, uh, some of the criterion here. As you see in this table, display quality and the viewing angle, uh, ease of use, versatility, energy consumption. And we're going to look at uh, a recent purchase, uh, assuming you're listening to this not too far away from 2020 when I'm first making this uh, narrative uh, audio version of this PowerPoint during the coronavirus. It's closed down all the schools except for online. Uh, so I'll give you a recent example of a flat screen TV uh, that I just had delivered today, actually. And I'll show you the decision-making process. And it's similar to this. So you, this is you know, the kind of things you want to look at when you are uh, selecting you know, the quality of most things. This is the third technology I want you to compare. Uh, so this one's a little trickier, but not, not a whole lot. Uh, so the idea here is similar to a fluorescent uh, light bulb and the ceiling, the fluorescent lamps, lights in the ceiling. And so you have a gas um, uh, in a cell here, similar to the gas in the lamps in the, uh, in the bulbs. And then um, you, uh, you heat it up and you send an electric charge spark through it and it creates a plasma exciting the atoms uh, and then those atoms uh, in turn when they get excited will release uh, some energy and in this case the uh, uh, the gas will release uh, electromagnetic radiation in the ultraviolet range uh, the photons remember photons are the particles the uh, associated with the waves of light the uh, photons they have an effective mass it's it's a tricky thing with, with light. You can look that up with whether light has you know, one of the mass associated with light, which there really isn't any. It has an effective mass because these photons interact with matter as if they have mass. But in reality, the electromagnetic radiation is a wave going through space. But regardless here, so you've got, um, you have this gas in a, uh, this gas that you're exciting, just like the light bulb in the ceiling, and then when it, the gas gets excited, it releases some energy that then hits this phosphorus um, coating on the light bulb. It's on the inside of the uh, inside of the bulb, and here it's uh, painted on these cells. And then those atoms, the phosphorus atoms, get excited and go a certain energy level, and then go back to uh, resting state and release uh, the visible light that we see. So that's that's the two-stage process there. So, so read all those words there and then uh, watch the, uh, the uh, videos here. Um, well, there's two of them actually. The first one, watch on a plasma, how the plasma display works, how I just described it. And then a second one here, uh, using a TV plasma or LCD as a computer monitor. And that will uh, segue into where I'm going to insert here uh, my choice of a uh, large flat screen television during this coronavirus here. So all of us, wife and children, confined to our house have a little bit bigger viewing pleasure. So here's a comparison of uh, some different TVs that I considered before purchasing one in 2020. Uh, I have an account with Consumer Reports. So I had one for 30 years, and uh, I find it to be a very uh, good source of unbiased testing. And so I narrowed down my search uh, within Consumer Reports. Uh, first, by uh, considering consumer satisfaction and predicted reliability, uh, mostly consumer satisfaction ratings, and then uh, comparing it with some of my own experience with some other manufacturers. And so, um, 
I narrowed it down to Samsung and Sony that I wanted to compare. Then I did a search uh, for 60 inch or larger TVs. Uh, I wanted a nice big screen for the whole family to watch from different distances <clears throat> within the big room. And uh, also I uh, put less than $1,000 uh, just assuming I would probably upgrade in a couple of years, maybe something else. And uh, I've had many technologies where I've spent a little too much to get the bleeding edge instead of the cutting edge. Uh, <clears throat> so these were very good value for less than $1,000. Um, <clears throat> and so you see different criteria here. Uh, <clears throat> I won't go through all the different ones, but this is the kind of thing I would like you to do when you're picking uh, components. And you decide what's important to you. Uh, and you can see the different uh, ratings here that Consumer Reports uses with the different colors and, uh, uh, and the arrow, double arrow up or uh, down in some cases. Uh, so for the super high depth HDR, you end up paying twice as much. And so that was a call that I made not to look at those. Uh, we, and the less than $1,000 screen those out. <laughs> um, so I compared the top two uh, in, within that selection of the, uh, the top Samsung and top Sony and put them head to head here considering that the uh, Sony was $130 more and not really a whole lot different in performance um, pretty much equivalent but I still wanted a little more research. So then I found this video here comparing the exact Samsung model that I was considering and then something close to the Sony. And uh, this is a good video I'd like you to take a look at and they're comparing design, picture quality, motion, input lag that has to do with gaming and the response for the gaming console, sound quality where we like to produce music in our house and listen to music uh, quite a bit so that was a big difference in uh, comparison. Uh, so uh, you can see different things here. I'll let you drill down in the design having to do with the backlighting and the distribution of LEDs through the LCD screen. That's how that works. The lighting source is LEDs in the back uh, and then it shines through the LCDs that you've learned about. So you'll learn about that while listening to this video. And also, uh, viewing angle, you know, big room, how much difference does that make uh, to us? And um, the TV is generally in a pocket where you can view it from a lot of places without having to see it at a tight angle. But here are some criteria of that. Uh, reflections, and you can see the imaging that they do with that. Peak brightness, and they describe the value of that, and the color volume, uh, and how that distributes out. So I'll let you take a look at that. And that uh, gray uniformity, um, uh, and then the response time of things moving quickly, and how much blur there is with that, um, and how you can. Uh, Fix that or modulate that. It's different types of computers or different types of TVs. Uh, your input lag and listen to that and how that matters for you gamers interfacing uh, your gaming consoles with the TV or your computer with the TV. Uh, variable refresh rates and the different. Uh, ways that you can uh, change things and the smart features also that, uh, that you can have access to. Uh, again, the sound quality, which is important to us. Uh, and uh, you know, we couldn't, couldn't produce a large bass, but we have our own monitor speakers and big amplifiers and things that we make music with. You can hook external speakers up to this, which we might do to get the deeper bass, but you can see the uh, 
responses you know, different frequencies for the sound and the quality there and then uh, finally a comparison between the exact Samsung model and a similar Sony model with two that we're looking at and uh, you could see uh, see that so then I narrowed it down to a uh, pretty much looking at the Samsung's and see if I can find some supporting evidence for that went to Amazon uh, I start looking at all of the ratings in there Here's one example rating I found uh, in-depth and informative. Uh, I somewhat avoid the fives and the ones. The fives can be fake. There are people actually paid to put fake ratings up. Uh, and uh, ones, the same thing. People paid to trash each other's products. Usually you can get the most honest reviews in the middle. The, the threes and fours I find are the most valuable. Ones and twos uh, tend to be fake sometimes and fives. And so I purchased it and it uh, arrived today. And the family is excited about it. Watching some a little bit of sports, music, uh, good quality programming. So uh, what you previously looked at with the, uh, the television um, is the kind of thing that I want you to do, but uh, in a, maybe a more tabular, not necessarily quantitative way. Here are some cue diagrams, decision analysis uh, type things. Uh, I've been doing this for 40 years, these kind of things with all kinds of decisions. Where to go to school, where to move to, what job to take to buy, all, all kinds of things. Um, you got to be careful on how you assess things and put numbers to things. These are not, uh, these two examples here don't have weighted weights on your criteria. Uh, if you don't put weights on it, then you could uh, uh, run into a problem with uh, having something that you're considering as a criteria that doesn't really have any magnitude of significance compared to the others. And skew your results unknowing that you're just adding the numbers up. So here are you know, just a couple uh, examples of different things to compare. Don't feel you need to use the scale or numbers or pluses or minuses. You, you decide how you want to evaluate uh, your systems. And the cost is pretty straightforward comparison. But other things are more qualitative. You have to find a, find a way to assess them. Um, and another another way to uh, compare also the decision making process. So I have down here. So for the design projects or simply deciding a product to buy, you do this: uh, do thorough research to support what you design or buy. Educate yourself on the basics and what is the most current, emerging, relevant ideas. Uh, you have to be a scholar if this. Uh, that's relevant to what you're considering. It's not necessarily for design a PC you would do that, but uh, for other rigorous uh, research kind of results that you're looking for, you can do patent searches, use the library. Um, not necessarily Google and random comments on the internet. Uh, however, if you're picking a product, um, you, that becomes more relevant. Um, number two, define your decision criteria. Uh, number three, narrow your choices to what design uh, or, or buy down or that you're buying down to a few finalists to compare with the diagram and use the diagram of your choice. And then uh, effectively communicate what you have done in both writing using professional writing standards and include tables, graphs, stories, etc. And orally using concise PowerPoint bullets supporting the easily read and understood visuals. Supported literature. So this is a general rule for uh, designing or picking things, assuming you have to convince other people. Uh, right? Now that, that number five is not as important if you just have infinite wealth and you're just doing anything you wish to do to please yourself. But in working, that's never the case. You've got customers, you've got colleagues, uh, 
supervisors, investors, <clears throat> trustees, board of directors, you always have to have some way of communicating your choice and your decision process. Uh, a flat screen TV, much smaller than the 60 inch that I bought for $800. And this was a thousand dollars. And this was, oh, I don't know, five, six years prior. And this is an LCD screen and uh, um, has the LCD, or has LED backlighting. And some of it had burned out. So uh, in the tradition of our household, we try to fix things. We try to fix things. So we spent uh, $60 and ordered a, a uh, board from Japan. And it, it uh, seemed to be working for a little bit uh, for the control board for the LEDs and the backlighting, but then uh, it had more problems. So, so we didn't want to throw any more money into it. And plus it was much smaller and you know spent so much uh, on it, size of it. So then I just up to a new one. And this was before COVID. I've done the same thing with CRTs before too, where we had lightning storms and it burned out. Uh, it was able to fix. It's not worth it these days. So in general, uh, you don't want to buy for expansion. 